The Lounge, proudly brought to you by Johnny Walker. Keep walking. Hello, welcome to The Lounge. The Lounge is brought to you by Johnny Walker. Keep walking. My name is Kweku Sechiado, and The Lounge is broadcast from the Equator Bar at Mapalm Royal Beach Hotel in Accra. My guest tonight is a medical doctor with experience that few practitioners get. Dr. Bettina Ama Bohine Anda was President John Kufuor's personal physician when he was in office. In fact, she still is his doctor even 10 years after leaving the presidency. She's a nutritionist as well, an author of The President's Physician, the book in which she recounts her unique experience as the young woman responsible for ensuring the president was alive and fit for purpose. In the aftermath of Vice President Mahmoud Baumia having been taken ill recently and flown out to recuperate, I thought she might be just the right person to have drinks with so we can better understand what caring for the health needs of a person charged with the care of an entire nation entails. Welcome to the lounge. Thank you, thank you, Kweku. So what are you drinking? Would you like um, uh, something stronger than, um, is that fruit juice? This is orange juice, and I think I'd rather stick you to stick that. stick with mm -hmm. it, okay. Um, what did uh, President Kufo drink? Can I remember? Um, you know, sometimes you have a memory block, but uh, he drank everything everybody else drinks, I guess. Water, juice, a little okay. cognac here and there. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, yes. And your book, The President's Physician, Bumps on the Road. Bumps on the Road, why? Well, um, actually, it's Bumps on the Smooth Road. Because, Sorry, yes, Bumps because, on the Smooth Road. Yes, because mm -hmm. um, uh, most people see the brighter side of this job. And most people think it's a very smooth road. All they see is the travel and all the interesting things that go with it, the convoy and all of that. But in all of these uh, very seemingly nice things, there are a lot of bumps. So that's why I put it there, you know, that the president's physician bumps on a smooth road. Why did he ask you? I mean, you have to ask him that question. But anyway, uh, we've been family friends for a long time, and I guess... Your family and his yes, family. Yes, my, my, my family, the Bohines and, and the Kufours. And I guess everybody in that position would want somebody who they can trust to look after them because uh, the job is stressful enough and uh, you, you, you just need somebody you can trust and somebody you can relax with as well. You don't need somebody who's holding a stick behind you and you know, pushing you and, and telling you what to do all the time. So I guess that's why. But uh, maybe next time you meet him, you want to ask him that question. But of course you must have asked him. I mean, when you, you d did you or did you just say yes, sir? Well, I, I was a little bit surprised. I was looking after him unofficially. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was fine. And I had a young family. So when he popped that question, I thought it was going to be temporary. So I said, oh, OK, that's fine. And he said, well, my doctor is going away. So this is a permanent position. Uh, and I was a little bit startled. But I told him I'll talk to my family and get back to him. But I, I never really asked him. Why me? Because I'd been looking after the family prior to that, you know, um, unofficially. As I'm saying, we've been friends of the family for a while. Um, this was what, in 2005? It was 2004, 2004. yes. But before that, I'd been looking after, after, after him, not and as you, his official physician. Okay, and so your initial reaction was, did you feel privileged or did you feel burdened? I'd say... I was a little surprised, a little shocked. You know, it was mixed emotions, some happiness, some, because I was looking at the time, we had 1,600 doctors in this country. And if you're picked to look after um, the highest man of the land, you know, you can, you can only be happy. But then again, I was thinking it, it may be quite burdensome because um, this is somebody who everybody's looking up to, and this is somebody who is not allowed to get ill. 
So um, that aspect of it, I was a little and bit And that would be your worried. responsibility where he to fall ill? Absolutely. To ensure that nothing Absolutely. nasty happened? Absolutely. You were 26. Um, I was a bit older. I qualified at age 26. This was 20 years ago. We were actually celebrating our 20th anniversary out of school, mid-school. Okay. And this was probably about three, four years after. So you're about 30. So about 30, 29, 30. Right. So, okay. um, and he was 62. What did your husband say? Oh, 62, 26. Okay. Well, I think that's a reversal. But never mind. My husband was fine. Um, he's known him as well for a long time. Um, I had, as I said, I had one young, young daughter, so that was going to be a bit of a challenge. But I had, you know, a very supportive family. So he just said, um, do what you have to do. And uh, I thought that was very charitable of him, but he supported me all the way through. Were you working with a team? Yes, we had um, a medical assistant and we had some nurses. Of course, we had the ambulance driver as well. So it was, it was, it was teamwork. So as much as I was his personal physician, I was the head of the medical team for the whole of the VIPPU, which is the, the unit that looks after the presidency. So that, that, I acted in that role as well. Was there somebody else looking after the vice president? At the time, um, I, I wasn't aware of an official physician, but I wasn't looking after him directly. Obviously, he was working out of the castle, Osu Castle at the time, which was a seat of government. And therefore, if and when anything medical arose, they would call me to come and see him. But I wasn't his official physician. So I guess he must have had his doctor. What did your job entail? As, what does the president's doctor do? 24-hour duty, because you're not allowed to not be there. And also, you know, taking you away from the normal pleasures that you know you would enjoy as a young person. However, um, very enjoyable because, of course, you get to travel, you get to see, uh, not necessarily hop not because that was not what I was there for, but you get to see people who, under normal circumstances, you may never have seen in real life. So, so I see in the book, you know, you met uh, Robert Mugabe, mm -hmm. who you're related to somewhat. Yes, yes, yes. Um, he, he, he was married to Sally, who, who was um, a twin sister to Your aunt. my aunt. Yes, my aunt, um, Mrs. Esther Boini, the late Mrs. Esther Boini. So I knew of him and I remembered him, but of course, I was very little when he was coming to Accra, so, you know, but I met him amongst other people. I mean, we went, of course, to Buckingham Palace, met the Queen. So these were the lighter side and the pleasurable sides yeah. of the work that we did. And I see some interesting pictures in the book and meeting Prime Minister Manning. And yes, that was, that was fantastic. Uh, that's the Jamaican Great. Uh, Prime yes, Minister. Yes, yes. I see your invitation uh, card uh, from uh, the Queen to attend dinner um, in Buckingham Palace. An interesting uh, card. Where is it? Okay, which says, you would know where it is. Um, okay, there it is. Mm -hmm. The Lord Steward has received Her Majesty's command to invite Dr. Betty Nanda to a state banquet. Sounds very dramatic, but basically what they were saying was that, you know, come for the state banquet, which was a great honor. What did you eat? You know, can I remember? It's just very little things on a little plate. And you know, it wasn't your usual rice and stew. Right. But uh, somehow, I don't know how it went down. And I was sitting right next to, to the Queen's physician, who was double my age or maybe triple. But we had a great conversation. So I can remember that, but I really can't remember what I ate. Okay, I'm sure you had to eat afterwards. Oh, definitely. I mean, <laughs> you need to make sure that your stomach is full before you go Either to bed. Before or oh, after. yes, you know. You to, uh, that you we, we had to do that a lot of times. So when you woke up in the morning, then you did what? You went to his home? Normally I would. I'd pass by his home. Uh, my office was in the castle. So depending on what he was doing that day, I'd probably go ahead to the castle and uh, wait for him. Because although he was my prime patient, I was looking after the other members of staff of the VIPPU. 
the medical assistant did most of the work, but sometimes there were some niggly cases that she would want me to see. So if he had events before going to the castle, then I would wait and go with him in one of the vehicles, the castle. So that was pretty much, and you sat through everything, literally. Um, you wouldn't sit in the meetings, but you would have to be, so you'd be in the back within arm. Um, yes, within arms um, yes, so that, yes, um, if there was anything that you needed to do. So, like I said initially, it was 24 hour duty, but uh, quite enjoyable. Did you have to look out for his water and his food that, you know, that it was not tampered with? Did, did, did that come under your purview? <sighs> Or would that be security? That was more security. Um, but of course, um, I would sort of take a cursory glance when his food was brought to him. I will just look at it and half the time he'll look away, of course, if the food was not uh, what I, I was expecting him to be eating. But that was the lighter side of it. But security was really responsible for whether any, of course, he had his own glasses and plates and stuff like that, you know. But I, I, I was looking at it from a distance. So it's interesting that you mention, you talk about, you know, if the food was not what he should be eating. Mm -hmm. Of course, you were not a nutritionist at the time. Now you are. Mm -hmm. um, what should presidents eat? Presidents should eat healthy just like anybody else. I always said to myself that I wasn't going to treat him any differently from treat, the way I treat my other patients. Because the minute you start that then you've lost the battle because you look at him as, you know, somebody totally different or some different kind of human being. But, but, he, he's, but he is president. Well, he's president. He is a different that's kind of human being. Kweku, that's his title. But he, the same blood that runs through your veins runs through his. And the same things that uh, we are encumbered with, um, health issues. You know, he's a president, yes, but he could have those health issues as well. So I was very careful. I mean, I would normally say to just healthy eating, lots of veg, have some carbs, have some protein. I mean, he was eating the regular stuff, but uh, making sure that, uh, and also that you're not uh, overdoing it. Because of course, you know, I mean, this I'll, I'll tell you for free. If you eat very heavily, what happens is that you have blood shunted to your stomach. To, that's why you feel sleepy after you've eaten. So you eat a very heavy meal. So you eat some for when I've been quite before, you before go and sit meeting. in a meeting. Mm -hmm. Of course, you're going to be sleeping in that meeting. So some of the things that I had to look out for were a little bit uh, mundane, but we, we still did what we, we needed to do. Did you catch him nodding off sometimes? Oh, he's human. <coughs> I mean, I didn't catch him, but the, the media caught him. <laughs> <laughs> um, and sleep? That, 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 that How was much a, sleep should precedent that, that's a big problem. be entitled to? Yeah, I mean... At a minimum. A, a normal adult, I would say, should have about six hours of sleep in 24 hours. And people would say that is virtually impossible, being a precedent. Because, of course, he, I was on 24-hour duty, but he was on 25-hour duty. You know, he had to always be alert and virtually awake. And that's the big problem that I have with um, my, the, uh, the handless of, of heads of state and even other VIPs. They tend to push them so much that um, they, they don't have much sleep. And of course, if you don't have much sleep, it affects your, your thinking and it affects your mood. And you know, it has a knock-on effect. So six hours and 24 hours realistically you know, should do. And I always say that try and catch a nap. If you can sleep for 30 minutes in between, especially power, after power, a power nap, you know, um, that helps um, if they will allow you to. But uh, that, that's my biggest problem. And no sleeping. And was, he, was, he, was he getting six hours on average? Was he he getting normally that? will try, but on the days that, for example, he had a speech to make the following day, if you have the state of the nation address, you're not right. about to be sleeping at 10 o'clock and waking up you know, at, 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 at four or five. So on those odd days, he probably would sleep um, for, for shorter than that. But I tried to make sure I didn't live with him, but he understood the, the need to, to, to sleep so that the following morning he was refreshed. For, was he an for early sleeping. riser? Very much so, you know. He unfortunately is a, is a, goes to bed late and, and rises early, you know. And um, he had, he had ex 
I mean, it was amazing, his energy and his strength. Um, but sometimes I think when the adrenaline is pumping, mm -hmm. it gives you that boost. But then when it stops pumping, then you realize that uh, you're really, really tired. Is it that older people get away or can get away with, with uh, uh, shorter hours of sleep? Well, I guess the older you get, the, the less hours of sleep there. But after a certain that age... That you need or that you... That you can do, you can do with. I mean, okay. of course, if you can sleep for longer, that's fine. Because you can imagine a newborn baby or a toddler, you know, needs to sleep for My longer sleep hours. Yes, exactly. But um, older people, six hours, if you're lucky, eight hours, you can survive on that easy. Because I've heard about President uh, Kufuado also outlasting his younger cabinet ministers. Yeah, I, I still believe that really is the, is the, is the adrenaline um, that pumps and it, it just drives you. You go to bed, your brain is ticking, so you are in a hurry to wake up and do what you need to do. But um, I keep saying that we need to keep an eye because it catches up with you. What kind of patient was he? It's a difficult question, Kweku. He was um, he's like any other patient, could be stubborn at times. Um, Generally, I mean, anybody who knows uh, His Excellency President, former President Kufu, knows that he's a very easygoing person, easy to talk to, easy to reprimand. <laughs> he wouldn't like this, but that's the oh, truth. So you, did. you know, but I did. I mean, when I needed to put my foot down, and uh, there's a joke where he'll ask me, he'll say to, you know, my dad when he met him, that this little girl that I've taken to look after me, you know, she's the age of my youngest son, and, and, and she, she just drills me, and, but... I keep saying that if you've been tasked to do a job, you better do it well. And irrespective of who he was, I, I made sure that he, he did what he needed to do. But he was generally quite good, I must say. And he didn't he, make my work very difficult. Okay, and he respected your role. Absolutely. In spite of sort of being that young and, you know... Absolutely. I mean, he would normally say the things that I just said in jest, but... Generally, he, he respected decisions I took, and uh, he, would, he would try and do as I say. Did you ever have to give him injections on, yeah. his, on his bottom? <laughs> the, the thing a lot, of, uh, a lot of people say is this injections, but doctors don't give injections. Nurses do. So if there was any injection to be given, it would be the nurse who would do it. So who was the thankfully, nurse? <laughs> maybe you want to interview her yeah, one of these right, days. Yeah, no, we had just quite on a couple. That subject. <laughs> we had quite a couple of them, but you know, I, I cannot remember there was ever uh, the need to do that. And there are other places you can give injections, so it doesn't necessarily have to be on his, his on uh, his bum bum. And um, so you were on 24-hour call. Absolutely. Um, were there, for want of a better expression, expression uh, were there nights that you panicked, that the team panicked? Oh, or yes. days? Oh, yes. I mean, it may sound silly, but on a day where he has a common cold and has lost his voice and he has a speech to give the following day. We had one such episode which was an absolute nightmare. We were in China, he had to give a very, he would probably wouldn't remember himself, but he had to give a very important address the next day, which was probably about 15 minutes, 20 minutes long. And here we were having to make sure that voice came back, because we had traveled all the way from Accra to China, to Beijing. So we did what we needed to do, work some magic. The voice came back, thankfully. So. On a night like that, you're just hoping daybreak, he'll say good morning and you'll hear him, you know. And then, of course, the other extreme was um, when he had his road traffic accident, which is a lot of people's favorite subject. Which um, was the incident where another car ran into his vehicle yes, in Accra. Absolutely, yes, yes, in Accra. And, and then it rolled over, or did it not? I actually was not physically present, okay. but that's what I, I heard. But he was running too. Yes, and... Um, that was 72 hours of virtually no sleep. Because the first 24 hours after an accident, you may not see a scratch, you may not see a, you know, um, anything visible, but you need to keep an eye. So for nights like that, you just don't sleep. When he's asleep, you're awake. When he's awake, you're awake. You know, so, but there weren't that many. Because generally, he, he's a very healthy person. 
and uh, you know has aged gracefully. So he didn't give me too much work to do. So that night in China, mm -hmm. um, what did you give him to smoke? Oh, to smoke. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. What did you oh. give him? Oh, when, when after the program, see me when you've lost your voice, because and I'll I tell you what. I, I might need it. Uh, yeah, no, I, I'll, I'll tell you. Yeah? It was magic. So with that magic, with these magic potions. But doctors potions, don't do magic. I mean, you know, you're not. Uh, magic potions. Magic potions. They don't come for free. So okay. quickly, I'll wait for you to come and ask me, All then right. I'll give you a, a bit okay. of it. All right. And no, uh, it was really a bit of menthol here, you know, that kind of thing. And I think we were just lucky, because really, I mean, um, and I told him to rest his voice, mm -hmm. you know, so which is what the instructions normally. Luckily or thankfully, well, we came out and And then back to that accident, um, how bad was it on him? I think it was Both more... Physically and, and, and psychologically. I think it was more of psychologically, because you can imagine, um, thankfully I had just trained my staff you know, to manage road traffic accidents mm -hmm. if I happen not to be on the scene because I'm only one person and I can only be in one place at any given time. And I happened not to be there because he was going straight to the castle. So um, for him, psychologically, it was, it, was quite, uh, it was quite difficult. But then, you know, in his usual fashion, blew over really quickly. Physically, as everybody saw, Immediately after the accident, he had a meeting. He said uh, he had some chiefs who had come from up north and in typical fashion insisted that he needed to see them before they go. As much as we kicked against it, he still did, which I think was good because then everybody saw him on television and realized that he, he, was, alive he was alive and well. Mm. So um, physically, we were lucky. He came out with, uh, with, with, with no, no issues. What kind of person um, should the doctors, sorry, should the president, what kind of person must the president's physician be? Qualities. If I go on and on, then maybe I'll be, you know, blowing my own horn or, you know, but, go ahead, but no. really it you is have what to it be, is, yeah, from your experience. You, you have to be very tolerant. You have to have great mental strength or psychologically you must be quite sound because you you see it's the job is not just looking after him there's the politics of it and i'm talking politics as in not party politics but amongst your other people you work with because security is trying to do their work you are trying to do your work the family is coming in his friends are coming in you know so you must have some sort of psychological, you know, um, you, you, you must be psychologically quite sound. The other thing is that you must be physically fit because what happens is that, uh, as I said, the adrenaline is pumping and you see them bouncing on their feet and they can do six, seven programs in a day, which under normal circumstances you wouldn't do. So you need that physical strength as well. Of course, you must be So you very must be healthy yourself. Healthy yourself. And then you must you know, um, know what your code of, 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 of ethics or your Hippocratic oath that you've sworn not to open your mouth too wide and say things you shouldn't be saying. Because even more so, um, these people are people whose information must be kept, you know, um, must be managed, I should put it that way. So um, I guess, and of course you must see the lighter side of things because you're going to go through, you normally will go through a lot of challenges. But then there were times where I cried, there were times I laughed, there were times... But, Why know, would you cry? Because you get really tired sometimes. And you're far away from home, your daughter's had an asthmatic attack, your mother doesn't want to tell you, you know, the usual things. And you are not physically present. So for me as a woman as well, it was, it was quite tough. And there were days I just felt like, you know what, am I in the right job? Maybe I should uh, be somewhere else. So there were days you, were, you wish you could quit? Oh, yes. I mean, there were days I actually, not threatened, because that's quite a strong word, but there were days I requested to quit, but of course it fell on deaf ears. He never even listened to any of that. How much should we know about our president, vice president's health status? Hmm. Very cool. I mean, um, I've spoken about this, this particular issue a couple of uh, occasions. And um, I have my personal view, and whatever I'm going to say here, I must say, is my personal view. 
I think first we should take into consideration that they are just as human as we are and they are bound to fall ill. Yes, they are public figures and therefore my position on this is if his condition or you know, sickness is going to take the person away for a protracted period of time or for example the person has a mental condition that's going to affect the work that he's doing, of course we need to let uh, the people over who he rules um, or you know we need to let the uh, we need to let people know however the extent to which they should know is what my problem is i'll give you a typical example if the queen or say the duke of edinburgh or whatever went into hospital what do you see on television or bbc people sending messages of, of, of uh, you know, solid, good wishes, good wishes and, mm. and putting flowers and wishing them well. However, from my experience, if you said somebody in our African continent, and I'll come to that, because people take me on on that, was ill and he was in hospital. Number one, a lot of drama. Lots of people going there to see whether really he's ill, is he dead, does he have one arm off. The second thing is that people tend, unfortunately, to use it for political gain. Because then you hear one side saying this, another side saying something else. You reverse it, and then the other side was saying that some other time. For me, you know, our management as people of that information is a little bit, you know, I think it leaves a bit to be desired. And therefore, let's not forget also that they are patients and they have rights. We have a patient charter in this country where it is said that that information should be given. I mean, I'll read it out to you. It says, the patient is entitled to confidentiality of information obtained about him or her, and such information shall not be disclosed to a third party without his or her consent or the person entitled to act on his or her behalf, except where such information is required by law or is in the public interest. So how are we going to stretch this public interest? Mm -hmm. Like I said, if the person is going to be off work for a while, you need to let people know exactly what is going on. And then again, if the person has some reason why psychologically they cannot continue to be there, you need to let them know. But otherwise, um, I think we should telling people the person is ill, it's going to be of work. For me, um, it's sufficient information to give. Should um, of course with the patient's consent. Right. Should should there be regular updates? Assuming he is or she is away for a prolonged period of time. Take say Nigeria, mm. um, when uh, President Buhari was away for months. And before him, uh, in the, you know, in the uh, previous, well, not with Good Luck Jonathan, but before yes, yes, Good Luck Yaradua. Jonathan's uh, predecessor, Yaradua, 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 yes. who it is alleged had passed away when he was flown back and, you know, no information went out. I mean, is that sort of too extreme? Um, well, I mean, quick, I, I always say this as well, that we need to get the doctors or the medical team to communicate effectively with the politicians who are going to come out of the statements. Because what happens is that, and then again we are coming back to management of information. Doctor knows this is what is going on. Um, the politician or the, you know, whoever is working with the president or vice president knows something else. And so they come out with a statement. Doctor is not happy. Um, but it's not going to say anything until the president has told them that they should. So it ends up being a bit messy. Updates are important. And sometimes uh, people are not very satisfied with those updates because what you hear is he's getting better. What does that mean? Because, for example, uh, President Buhari, he was ill for a protracted period of time. In my personal opinion, the, the Nigerians needed to be told, like, look, he's going to be away, say, for three months. Because, you see, when you go into hospital, 
normally you're not there for an infinite period. They will tell you that you know this thing is going to take, say, six months to treat. So you give or take another month. And so you know those updates are absolutely important because if you don't give people that information, it leaves space for people to then start conjuring things, start fabricating things, start thinking they know what they don't know. And that information gets out there. And unfortunately, sometimes it does more harm than good. You know. What about the security considerations? I mean, assuming you, you set to, you announced that all oh, the president is going to be away for six months. I mean, that's a very long time for the president to be away. I, I, and um, yes, again, this is Africa. Um, as against the United States, I don't, I don't, there has never been a coup in the United States. Mm. Or, it, well, there has been a coup in Britain <laughs> a long time ago. Uh, but within the African political context, um, is that not a consideration that perhaps the, the managers of the administration, the, the politicians and the security advisors think it's not a good idea to tell everyone the president is that ill? Well, um, I'm not a security person. We have a, had a bit of security training, but I come profess to be a security person. And that is why I think the communication should, if a statement is going to go out, like you say, the politicians should come together with the security and come together with the medical team. We give bare facts with the consent of the patient. If he has a stroke, we'll say he has a stroke. If he has a headache, we'll say he has a headache. So we give that information. But as to how it's managed between security and his handlers, because I cannot say for sure. However, all I can say is that if he's going to be away for six months and you don't come out and tell people, because of course, after you say he's going to be away for six months, next question is going to be, so what really is wrong with him? Mm -hmm. Or what is keeping him away for six months? You know, so you, that m information, ha I don't think we're there yet, somehow. And I, I, I don't want to get into the mind of Nigerians or the Nigerian mm -hmm. government, but what I'm thinking is that they probably were also worried about how that information was going to be managed. Lots of heads or of used. states abroad, or used, exactly. Lots of heads of states abroad, you hear they've had prostate cancer, you hear they've had throat cancer, you hear they're going for chemotherapy, and it's fine. They just wait until the person comes back to work. And of course, that's why we have a vice president, or that's why we have a certain, you know, yeah, success hierarchy. or what, hierarchy. So you will think that uh, people would, uh, would understand, but unfortunately, our management of health and medical information in this country sometimes leaves, leaves, leaves quite a bit of it. But I can also see it from their point of view. Because as a lay person, if you tell me that somebody was ill, and then somebody collapsed or did not collapse, and somebody, you start asking questions. So if the president or vice president, um, you know, had a dizzy spell in public and, you know, has to be supported or helped to, to go away, um, couldn't walk, uh, wh what should, what is the public entitled to know? Well, I mean, obviously, in this day of social media and uh, uh, phones that have cameras and stuff, it will be captured. And it will get out there even before the public gets to know. But right. medically, I would think that whoever is managing him medically would come out. And if he had that disease spell, collapsed and never got, you know, never woke up or was in a coma for two days, you, you would have to come out and say something to that effect. However, um, like I'm saying, what caused that collapse? And sometimes people are too hasty to, to want the information. The person may have collapsed out of fatigue or hadn't eaten that morning. But unfortunately, we still always dwell on the worst case scenario. If somebody, a head of state, for example, collapses, you know, God forbid, here in Ghana or anywhere else, in, 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 in my opinion, in Africa, and you say that, oh, he passed out because probably, you know, he hadn't had, or other people say probably he hasn't had something to eat. Somebody's going to start, you know, generating this room. Oh, he has a brain tumor. Or we always look at the worst case scenario. And I'm saying this from reading about, you know, heads of state who, and then also talking to other physicians to heads of state 
who, you know, um, say that, oh, they said this man was dead. You know how many times, you know, even President Kufu, you know, even yeah. after his presidency. So for me, has a collapses, resuscitate, take him away. F if for, for whatever, um, whatever is worth, following day, if he's better, let him come on television. Let him come and speak and let everybody know that. You know what, he's well. And always, please, let us know that these people are human beings. They are allowed to pass out. They are allowed to. We sensationalize things too much. And if they do pass out and, you, and it's because they hadn't had enough rest, there was fatigue, should we just simply say so? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, does it matter? Um, and is that the case, that you know, uh, leaders tend to work with male physicians? Well, heads of state of this country, it had never been in the history of this country where an official physician, they may be looked after unofficially by females, but an official physician, a female, was asked to do this job. So um, I happened to be the first person to do it. And it was unusual for a lot of people because they expected to see a tall uh, John Kufo strutting and behind him here comes this um, and even black, taller. Uh, <laughs> black face with short hair, red lips you know, woman running after him, and they're thinking, are you a secretary, or are you his BA? No, I'm his doctor. And they didn't take it very, very well, a lot of the time. So right. it's an unusual situation. Right, so did you, exper you, did you experience that, or you? Oh, several times, okay. oh, several times, uh, where people would, they come you know, gloss you over me and say, I'm actually right. looking for the physician, President Kufo's physician, I have a name here, Dr. Anda. I'm like, okay, that's me. They say, are you sure? I mean, we're, we're looking for his doctor. I mean, almost like you don't understand. Not his So PA. I said, okay, that's me. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, madam. And then they take me along. I had it several times. And for me, I'll giggle afterwards. The first few times wasn't funny because I said to myself, you know, can't I do this job? Do I look like somebody who is not very efficient? Or, but then later, I just, I just laughed about it. Did you ever recommend to President Kufo to get medical treatment outside? When is that necessary? When well, I always say we take it on a case-by-case -case basis because if you don't have the information, it's difficult for you to, 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 um, to speak on this subject because you can't generalize. I, of course, we didn't... Uh, I looked after him here. And so um, we never really, during his presidency, had to, say, fly him abroad and say... Because at the time he was president as well, um, and even now, our medical care here is quite good. And therefore, tests that need to be done. Unfortunately, sometimes we have to fly these tests outside. It's getting increasingly better. But for example, a test that normally will take 45 minutes to do has to go to South Africa for seven days. And it comes back. You're looking for an immediate diagnosis, and therefore, if you can take the human being to South Africa, for me, it makes perfect sense. Um, but in his case, as everybody was aware, if he would go on a break, which he hardly ever did, it was a holiday, and um, that was where it, it, it ended. And if I needed to ask him to seek medical help abroad, definitely I would, because it's all in the interest of this greatest man of the land that we are serving. So I wouldn't... Uh, I wouldn't say no if he needed but, it. But uh, during his travels, did he not take advantage of the opportunity of being a few days away to, um, to do some tests or see a doctor? What, what was he going to do, Kweku? I mean, I was the dog's body. I was his general, general care physician. And we had all our consultants were local. And therefore, and all our tests were done here. His phlebotomy still takes his blood samples. He's taken his samples all his, you know, during that period, still does. We still run his tests uh, locally. And uh, until it's absolutely necessary, I mean, I, 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 at least during his presidency, we didn't have to. Can a physician advise his patient president to step down for health reasons? Definitely. <laughs> we don't see um, we don't see President Nkweku, President Anama. We see a human being. You see a patient. That's it. And therefore, if he needs to, because the, 
his medical condition vis-a-vis -vis the job that he's doing, there's going to be a problem. Of course, we, we are professionals. We just tell you as it is. The decision for you to step down is purely yours. We will tell you that, look, this job is not something you can, because of the stress of the job or because of the nature of your work, it will probably be difficult for you to continue. However, we cannot take decisions for them. So the final decision lies with, the, with the, the president or whoever that person is. How regular should a leader, president, run checkups? It depends. I mean, some people have, I used to travel with heads of state who um, their, their, their doctors will be holding equipment that I just had one little bag, you know, and some of them will be holding equipment that needs to restart the heart and all of that kind of thing. I'm, you know, just give it, keeping it simple. And I would wonder, that's because everybody has different medical conditions. So somebody will have to run their tests, say, every month, depending on what is wrong with them. So then again, it's an individual thing. However, at least a couple of times a year, you know, you would need to run tests just to see what the situation is. And, and of course, if there's an acute situation where you need to run tests, you need to do that as well, like a malaria test. Of course, you're not going to wait for six months to do that. You need to run it if you think your patient has malaria. So, but regular tests quarterly, twice a year, if the person is fairly healthy. But if they have health issues, it may have to be more often. Did President Kufu exercise? Yes, he did. Um, and that's part of the package uh, where you have to take a bit of time off. Sometimes it was difficult because as he said, he always said that even going to the bathroom, your security follow you there, right to the door where you have to go in and they shut the door and stand behind the door. So you can imagine if he needed to go abroad and go to a gym, the drama of coming out of his room, being followed by three security men to go on a treadmill, even when he's tired and he needs some water, everybody's standing there looking at him. So it is not that easy. However, the few times that we had the opportunity, especially when he was here, and he loves to walk, you know, so instead of taking a lift, he'll take the stairs. And, you know, those things are exercise as well. They may not be uh, what you're thinking should be exercise. But yes, he did exercise. Should we replicate that kind of trans transparency that surrounds the health status of, say, the U.S. president. We saw what happened recently with Donald Trump and all the tests that were done, were announced in public, his body mass index and everything uh, made public. I mean, sometimes those things are showmanship, I mean, in my opinion. But having said that, um, I'm still not convinced from what has happened fairly recently, from what happened, unfortunately, I don't like to refer to this, but Prof. Sata Mills' unfortunate demise, mm -hmm. and you know, from what has happened in other even African countries, I am not so sure we are ready to you know, take this information and use it, um, use it properly, or you know, just know that, okay, that's great, our president is healthy. Um, a lot of the time, like I said, if it's not being used sometimes for political gain, it is being used uh, for, 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 for other things. And we always see the, 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 the other ends of, of the scope. I mean, I hardly ever hear, for example, with um, His Excellency, the Vice President, having gone out. When you read on social media, you don't hear, leave him alone, he's well. I don't think there's much wrong with him. It is like, oh, has he had a stroke? Oh, did he have a, a pulmonary embolism? Did he have a, and these are big, 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 big medical conditions. So you're wondering, why would anybody, you know, go to that extent? Unless they have some information, I don't. Right. And from your experience, I mean, what do you make of this, what you read about Vice President uh, Baumia's condition, what is circulating on social media? I mean, you don't know, I mean, I take it, you're not his doctor, so you don't mm. really know what's wrong. No, no, I try. But from uh, your yeah. experience, mm -hmm. the knowledge that you have, the experience that you've had uh, managing the president, the former president's health, mm -hmm. what do you make of the stuff that's circulating? It brings me back to my 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 uh, my, my. Do you read issue. it, or do you just? A lot of the time, it? I just I, you know I, I try not to read it because 
sometimes it, it, it gets me quite upset because I look at the things and trying to, people are forcing, non-medical people are trying to put three conditions together and let them work. You know, like you have a DVT and he has a PE and therefore he has a stroke. It doesn't make any sense. Um, he has this and he got up and he almost collapsed. He must have a stroke. You can collapse when you haven't eaten. You know, so for me, um, until you're hearing it from his medical, you know, his, those who are managing him medically, I don't make any sense. This is on the assumption medically. that he did collapse because we don't, I don't know that. Mm. You didn't need that. I read it somewhere that they said he, Officially, you know, wasn't it? But that no, wasn't no, still exactly, social media. Exactly. Still social so media. That's not what so the for me, no, 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 no. So that's part of the no, speculation. Absolutely. And for me, with medical things, speculation, sometimes, in fact, a lot of the time, it's, it's quite harmful. I think we should wish him well, whatever the situation is. You know, it is, uh, it is yes, it's, it's for us Ghanaians, you can only wish somebody well and say, let's hope he comes back soon. Yeah, let's hope it's nothing serious, instead of always looking at the dire side of it and, you know, delving into what is that information going to do for you if they tell you that, yes, so he had, has a DVT. What do you care about that? What, what is it going to do? He is unwell. He's coming back a couple of weeks or he's coming back soon. You know, let's just, for now, with the way we manage our information, let's just keep it simple. President Atamils, what do you think about how his illness was, not the illness was managed, but how the information around his illness was managed? I mean, every time I heard something about, because I come from a medical background, and like I've spoken about patient confidentiality and all of this, but then, like I said, I don't think the information was together. We had too many people saying too many different things. For example, when he was taken to hospital, we heard he went in a regular vehicle, we heard he went in an ambulance. All these things are still speculation because we were not hearing that voice that came out to say, you know what, this is really what happened and therefore, or even if we wanted to, you know, even if that voice tried to come out, we're drowning it with all the speculation. So unfortunately, you know, I didn't, I wasn't happy with the way things were handled. But having said that, in the heat of things, it is very difficult to be um, circumspect, sit back and say, okay, what are we going to do? Let's come out with this statement and that statement. People are agitated, people are worried, people are, you know, because in his case, it seemed like it just sort of happened, you know, especially just prior to his demise. So. That's, All I can that's say prior to his passing away, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but he'd been ill oh, for, right, right, right. for a long time before that happened. Yes. Exactly, but then so, again... So when, I, so when I ask about how the information was managed, it's not just about the day he passed right, away, right, right, right. but, you know, the period of his illness. I still think, you know, people didn't know enough, and therefore they were speculating and people were saying all sorts of things. Citizens didn't know enough. Absolutely. The citizens or Ghanaians didn't know enough and therefore it left room for, for them to speculate and that, that's all we're reading. There was more speculation than anything else and um, I just hope moving forward we would um, come together. Security, those who are going to speak on air and the medical team will have to work together to you know, come out with something so that we do not leave room subsequently for, I, I mean, I, I can't judge myself, but um, in, my, in my time, especially for example, with this accident, I was getting calls all over. So I called my boss and said, do you want me to speak on air about this? Luckily for me, his team, media team, you know, and his spokesperson, who at the time was uh, Andrew Awuni and, you know, Cole had, 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 had handled it. And had said he's fine, he's recuperating, you're going to see him very soon, which pretty much happened, you know. So I think you need that team work to be able to come out with a statement that will be weighty enough, that will be informative enough, however, not infringing on those very delicate rights of the patient. Mm. So when 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 say a, a president has a terminal illness 
and has confirmed he's got a terminal illness. Should citizens know? I would imagine so. And by terminal, what do we mean? Sometimes you think somebody has prostate cancer, and therefore it's terminal. Somebody can have prostate cancer and live for 15, 20 years after. So let's if say, it's say the person has just a few years, and you see, I keep telling people that when the person is in that situation, it is unlikely you will even see the person in, in the public space because they'll be so ill that they'll have to be in hospital for a protracted period of time. Mm -hmm. And so by the mere, uh, you know, the nature of things, um, you would know that this person is, but you see, you have to, you have to get the patient's consent. Do you want us to come out and say that this is what it is? And so then we go back to the US and the UK. They've moved beyond where we are now. I don't know what happened there 50 years ago and how they managed that information. But I think we're trying. We're getting there. And in getting there, you have to learn to crawl before you learn to walk, before you learn to run. Um, uh, social media, how do we deal with some of this information we see on our leaders' health? I mean, sometimes you have to treat it with the content it deserves. And if you feel like you want to read it and believe it, I, I have a, a, you know, a, a different opinion. I mean, I think if it's not coming from a reliable source, really... If it's not coming, if it's not official, an official, official statement, um, or from his doctor... Absolutely. Quite frankly, it's worthless. <laughs> well, I don't want to use very strong words, but um, I, I think I can't help but agree with you quickly. Is there an age that you would say that, you know, a president or a man or woman, seeing what you, you saw President Kufour go through as president from a personal and health standpoint, is there a line under an age that should you would advise should not be crossed? Absolutely not. Um, I'll use my 84-year-old father as an example. <laughs> he still lectures in the University of Ghana Medical School, goes there twice or three times a week, teaches students for three to four hours. And if you leave such a brain back at home, you wouldn't be serving any purpose. So, in the same vein... Or I just mean, as VCREC crab. Absolutely. 93 Still or sharp. So, teachers. then again, it comes back to an individual thing. Person is healthy. Person is capable. Person is capable. His people, well, why not? What age are we going to cut off at? You understand? So, so I have a problem mm -hmm. with um, inject more youth, um, you know. By all means, surround yourself. Because, you see somebody has to succeed or there has to be some sort of a succession or there has to be some sort of a passing over or passing over the baton mm -hmm. transition absolutely so if you're surrounding yourself by younger people and teaching them the ropes and making sure that when you are not there they will be i don't have a problem with that but if you say we should have a cut off age for me in the outside world presidents are getting younger and younger but they are getting more and more capable. So if you're young and you're capable, you can prove yourself that you can rule this country, fair enough. But medically, to say that I have 26 year olds who are severely hypertensive, have enlarged hearts, people who are in renal failure, am I going to pick that 26 year old over, say, uh, you know, 75 year old who is perfectly healthy? So from a, from a, a medical standpoint, quite frankly, I can't, you know. Uh, you heard, I think, a week or so ago that uh, uh, Dr. Mahathir Mohamed, mm. a former uh, a president of, of uh, Malaysia, mm. who is mm. now 92, is going to contest in the next election. Well, 92 for me, Kweku, is a bit, you know, it's a bit excessive. However, but you if just, he feels, no, 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 no. Now that, you're that's ingest, yourself. That's a jest. <laughs> but if he thinks he's well enough to to carry that uh, responsibility. So be it. As a doctor. Take your Uncle Bob. Exactly. B Mugabe. Exactly. He who was, who was considering contesting in 2018. Exactly. He felt he was right strong enough. At the age of 94. He felt he was strong enough. Had his mental faculties okay, he thought. 
and thought he could rule. So hey, I'm not his doctor, so I can't tell you whether yeah. you know he was well enough yeah. to. And I think to the term, the not. presidential term, I think is five or six years. So he'll be hundred. Pushing a hundred. Yeah, yeah. By the time. I yeah. just don't like to put. A, uh, <laughs> I don't like to put a. Uh, you know, uh, I don't like to put too much of a slant on the age. Mm. But um, if they feel they're well enough uh, and, and realistically using that word advisedly, they can rule. How's President Kufo doing? We see him walking with a stick and sometimes having to lean on, uh, on a shoulder to, to, to walk. How's he doing? He's what? very well. And you see him with a smile on his face. And you see him at many events. And uh, he's not young. He's no spring chicken. So he's allowed to walk with a stick. 78? Yes. So mm. he's allowed to walk with a stick. And... Um, he loves walking with a stick. Sometimes he uses a different walking stick depending on what he's wearing. But oh, that, that's a joke. Uh, okay. <laughs> you know. No, but he's, he's fine. He's very well, still very sharp, and, and still very healthy, and still very jovial. He is well. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Bettina Bohene Anda, for your time and your fantastic insights. And uh, thank you for listening. I'm Kweku Sechiadu. See you next week. Good night. Thank you.